Okay, I'm going to walk you through how I created a hologram effect from Star Wars. So you have a beauty render, and this is what mine looks like right here. So it's just a Mandalorian helmet rotating uh, all the way. So it's a pretty simple render, uh, nothing complicated. I just wanted to kind of mess around with this effect. Um, by the way, if you want this project file, I will put this on my Patreon, so check out the link down below. So let's get started with the effect. So I rendered out some utilities, which had uh, my normal position, UVs, depth, what all those different things. And I'd use a crypto mess on this to isolate uh, the helmets instead of this little hologram projector. And the first thing I did was multiply a blue color into there. Um, again, I was looking at reference from Star Wars uh, to get the color um, matching pretty closely. And then after this, um, I kind of boosted up the highlights a little bit, kind of make it pop a little bit more. Um, I was looking at references the entire time, so the color grades were because of what I was looking at on my particular reference. So uh, there was no necessar necessarily a reason for doing all this besides uh, one, I thought it looked nice, and then also I was looking at reference. So after you add the base color, I added these uh, lines right here that are uh, going up with different variations. So they go up and slow down, um, as you can see here. Uh, there's just different speeds that it's going up, and sometimes it even stops and goes down a little bit, as you can see in the video. Hopefully you can see it. See, like, right there, it stopped a little bit. Uh, I used this Wave Maker. This is from the Survival nuke survival toolkit and basically i played around with the settings to get a um a, a specific uh, output right here and all i did was use that to drive the transform by using an expression which it is uh right here so i parented this output to the y uh translate so that way it goes up but it also has a randomized thing so if you look at the output number like on 115, it's 134, but the next frame is 136, and you keep going, and it, it slowly goes up, but it's at a random value. And then I boosted it up a little bit to make it a little bit more transparent. Um, but as you can see right here, the effect, it adds these horizontal uh, graphic lines that are actually really cool. Uh, this transform makes it to where it's not like this. I wanted it um, a little bit larger. <clears throat> And then again, I masked it by the helmet. So that way it's only on the helmet and not the environment. Again, that's how I got that effect. And then uh, the saturation node right here. Basically, all it did was desaturate that um, this specific alpha right here. Uh, so take these both off. I wanted it to uh, kind of stand out a little bit more. Okay, so next thing I did was a PXF distort. And I took a noise pattern that looks like this. Um, then I inverted it. And then what it did was it took the same mask that we used for the horizontal lines and then adds a distortion on it. And if I play it, you can see when it goes up, it's distorting it as it goes up. Kind of gives it a cool... Uh, um, again, I was looking at the reference and that's where I saw some distortion here and there and it was kind of randomized, which is why I decided to use this mask right here that I used for this grade to give it that distortion. Uh, in this node, all I did was I increased the amount to one. I'm pretty sure everything else was default. Uh, again, add a crop node afterwards because as you can see, the bounding box is 10,000 pixels. So obviously it's way too much. So the next little effect that I added to this hologram was I added a grid node and I increased the number to 400 to give it these kind of small pixelated effect masked by the helmet. And then what it did was it added a kind of a cool little holographic gradient effect. Um, I kind of noticed this in the original trilogy holograms. They kind of had this uh, pixelated effect. So I kind of wanted to replicate that particular one. Uh, and then here I adjusted the gamma to give it that kind of light blue effect. 
and then it, it stacks really well with all the other things we already added before it. Uh, and then here I boosted up the highlights using uh, the crypto mats that I've used before. And then now I grabbed Kier, kind of blurred it a little bit. And then what I did here was I just boosted the highlights, uh, same thing, and desaturated it just a little bit. You can see it kind of pings it out a little bit. Uh, here, what did I do? So what I did was to, whenever you blend it over the background, uh, what I did was I rotoed to make sure it's only on the helmet. And whenever you add a grade node and change the channels to alpha or RGBA, it doesn't matter, but I did alpha. I lowered the gain down so that way it could be a little bit transparent. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. And then here I boost the, uh, the grade node on this so that way it looks like it's actually emitting light. And then here I tinted it blue so it kind of makes it look like there's a blue light emitting from there. Oh, and a little trick here. So on these, I added separate shapes for these. And I just lowered the opacity to half, so that way it doesn't get to the full intensity that it does here. So it's kind of like a faded off grading effect. And then here, all I did was added a glow to the helmet using this glow exponential node. Uh, I had it set to the glow only, and then I think everything else is default besides the intensity. I dropped it down a little bit. Uh, you always you always plus uh, a glow effect, or you can screen it, but usually I plus it. And then here I added a little bit of blurring because it was a little bit too sharp. Uh, it also kind of helped it sit into the environment a little bit better. So I just blurred everything by two. And then this little setup right here is just to get the Z defocus node right here, which on this particular thing didn't really do anything. Um, but it kind of blurred the very top part of it. Uh, the reason why I did this copy node is because this is what it's called in the blender is view layer depth but this node wants the depth dot capital z so that is where you copy this into this channel so that way it has uh has this alpha but now it's going to have a different name so that is the whole point of doing that and then i pre-comped it out and this is what you get so pretty cool effect I like the way the distortion works and how the horizontal lines are kind of, uh, they're not consistently going up, which is what I saw in the original trilogy reference. So then I merged this over the background, which the background, uh, here is the beauty render right here. This model is free from Sketchfab. I will try to remember to put a link down below. If not, I will, somebody remind me and I can put it in the comments. But the only thing I did was I kind of, I brightened up direct glossy from blender and then i added an emission glow kind of gives it a soft uh lensing effect and then i highlight suppressed it a little bit because whenever you gain down here uh they're very bright so i just kind of killed the highlights a little bit and then i add some contrast right here with my little gamma trick so uh change it to hsv and then you switch it back but you add a gamma node in between then again, um, this is not necessarily important. Uh, it's just the template that I have. Okay, and then I've shown this node before. Uh, this adds some kind of CG dirt, I guess you will. Uh, again, same thing as the depth. You shuffle it in to get the position called the right thing. So in this case, it wants the capital P data. Uh, the camera is from uh, Blender that I exported. So that's where that comes from. And then these are pretty simple things to use. But as you can see, it adds some nice little breakup into the render. Again, the same trick here, uh, copy the depth for to get this name right here. And as you can see, what you can do actually is lens simulation, enable it, and you, uh, you click the camera and hit pick camera and it automatically sets up all these settings for you to match it exactly so that way you get the correct real world uh, focal length and all that then i rendered it out as a it's only a single frame and then i merged it over and this is what we have now so pretty cool as you can see um 
So now the only thing missing is some like uh, hologram rays. So this is what we're going to be creating next. Um, ignore this sharpen node. That was kind of a last minute thing that I did. I'll go back to that here in a minute. So all I did was look at the plate. Uh, I figured this is where it'd be projecting from. So I created a, a roto. So I have a roto here. And I masked that off from the plate. So now I get this. And then I graded the alpha. Uh, which this is not important right now. Um, so then I added this volumic uh, node. Or you can just use a volume raise, either one doesn't matter um i like the way this one works it's a little bit more intuitive in the controls so then you just move the center knob to go underneath it and it shoots up like a ray uh, all this was to increase this intensity of this so as you can see now uh this is what it looks like uh i ignore that i don't know what that's from um so i just blurred it out this is the color right here that's what it was so you have this, and then I kind of added a grade to give that blue color. I kind of blurred it out a little bit. And then here, what is this? All right, so here was I animated the this little roto shape right here to mask it off. So that way, if this wasn't here, it'd just be constantly at full opacity the entire time. All I did there was just mask it off, so that way it kind of goes up with the helmet image. Uh, so that way there's no overlap of it at all. And then I added a little glow. Pretty subtle, but it kind of helps sell the effect. And then this one down here is a little bit broader. So I did the same. This is the same uh, technique here. I'll walk you through that. So I have the shape. Um, let's see. Then the volume ray made it blue. Uh, this is a saturation node, although it's not really doing a whole lot. Um, same trick here with the roto. I masked it off the beginnings. So that way it doesn't go like that. Added a glow, and then I masked it off by a noise to give it a little bit more breakup. As you can see here, before and after. If I take that noise off, it... Uh, the reason why I added that is because I added some atmospheric smoke in the background, so I figured why not have it interact with this. Kind of gives it a nice little touch too, so that's why I did that. And then that's pretty much it for the hologram effect. So, uh, so basically all you have are some grade nodes and then some noise and noise patterns to grade it off of, to give it some lines, some some grid. And then you add some, you know, some gamma and then the alpha to kind of give it a little see through. Like, let me actually show you that real quick. So right here's the alpha. So if I disable that, you can't see through it. But if I enable that, you can see the background, which obviously a hologram is a see through projection. So that's why I did that. Um, but anyways, that's the hologram effect. So it's pretty simple. So obviously you can use this for CG renders, you can use this for any type of CG environments, or if you're using a live action plate, you can do this of yourself, whatever you want. But this is pretty much how I did it. So pretty much you just kind of grade it, give it some nice little breakup in detail. Uh, and then you get this, so add some lens effects. And then the hologram rays are pretty much just a roto. You add a volumetric effect, give it some color, you plus it on top, and then you can add some another layer. You can keep adding layers and make it more uh, detailed, unique, whatever you want to do. But this is a pretty basic, I would say a pretty basic setup to getting this kind of hologram effect right here. I was going for more of a retro original trilogy kind of hologram style effect. Um, but that's the final effect.